How to chiptune, an instructional video. Step 1. Acquire one certified Nintendo Entertainment Video Game Console. Step 2. Purchase one chiptune music pack from the internet. These music packs look identical to their certified Nintendo Game Cartridge Brothers in every way, and indeed, work exactly similarly. Step 3. Insert the chiptune music pack into the certified Nintendo Entertainment Video Game Console and engage the power button. Step 4. Begin by moving your cursor around the 16 boxes on screen. Each box represents one note. By pressing the B button, you can place a note on the box your cursor is over. When the quick moving black box moves over the note you just placed, a sound is produced. Listen! This note will loop infinitely. You can place up to 16 notes per screen, but this often does not sound pleasant. Next, add a melody to your beat. With a simple button combination, you can move a note up or down, depending on the sound you desire. Try adding a harmony part to your melody. Wonderful. Move up to four separate instrument tracks at the same time to fully round out your chiptune song. Thank you. This has been an instructional video. How to chiptune. And now, time for our main feature, Retro Feature, a look at three exciting chiptune artists in Austin, Texas. four and a half megahertz of processing power. I don't understand what you're telling me to do. I think I recorded, I recorded an album with my high school band when we were, when I was about 15, but it wasn't until I found Chiptune that I really felt like I had something I could call my own that was like pretty unique, you know? You can't just be like, I need a kick drum, you know? You have to be like, I have to make a kick drum. You have to design the sound from scratch using a series of commands, you know? to tell it what to do exactly when, or else it'll sound all boring. It'll sound like that. Every little thing is your fault if it's not not great, you know? I, I spend, this thing has a little counter. It'll tell you exactly how much time you spent working on a song. It's terrible. It reminds me of like, like, like Pokemon used to do that as a kid. It'd be like, you spent 99 hours playing Pokemon. And I'd be like, oh God. But like each one of these songs, like this, this is an old song. It has over 20 hours of work time on it. I, I got to a point in my life where I realized that 
I was obsessing over not being perfect and and because I was so obsessed with, oh, it's not good enough, it's not good enough, I never did anything. I was starting from ground zero. You know, I had just um, finished up my degree in chemistry and, and uh, you know, gone through quantum mechanics and PCHEM and these really hard classes and I thought, if I could do that, I can learn this programming language. <laughs> I guess I start out um, doing sketches and I have like several notebooks of graph paper. I write all of my games um, basically in notepad on my laptop. It's not very exciting to look at, it looks like a bunch of numbers. There it is. And once I get everything compiled, um, I will put my finished product on one of these compact flashcards. And I have this handy dandy power pack, which has been the most awesome thing ever. Um, and I can just put my code on here, put it in, and put it into the NES. Actually, there are eight buttons on the NES controller, and each one is a different bit. Um, so I can say, okay, when this bit is activated, I want it to change colors, or I want it to uh, reset all the graphics, or maybe I want it to shake and do something crazy. Um, you know, it's not a game. Uh, there's not a score or a, a goal or anything like that. It's just sort of, sort of supposed to complement what the musician is doing. So um, it's interesting to, to try to create something that is visually stimulating, but not distracting. A lot of electronic music has the suffering problem that you're watching a guy doing something and they're not really moving that much and you can't tell what they're doing. A lot of those guys are really like doing really clever stuff, but it's not a lecture on stage. You don't have time to explain to people what you're doing. You have to make that instant visceral connection. So yeah, this is the new guitar. It plugs over here into its little radio and always like, usually the first thing I'll do at a show is I'll plug this thing in and it'll start blinking and then I'll figure out how far away I can go and still receive a connection to it. So it's really far usually, but uh, you know, I, I had the thing going. You jump out into a crowd and you start shredding, people know what the hell's happening. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, it makes noise now. Playing shows seems to be the best way to get personal satisfaction out of music. So, you know, music is just sort of it's like most art, it's just something you end up doing because it's fun for its own sake. And that's, you know, sort of got to be a, a factor about it. You have to enjoy the actual work of it because it is work. It's tedious and toiling to sit there and listen to the same song 5,000 times to figure out why that one note just doesn't sound right. And so, obviously, even if I never played a show again, I'd still mess with music. It would just be a thing that you would have to do.